Temperance Hymn is number 850, We Walk by Faith. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you <coughs> all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us together call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest. Amen. Amen. things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke, we too believe and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, 
although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light of affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Bezezebel, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself, and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man, then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they said, had said, he had an, has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived, standing outside. They sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Today's readings remind us of two things. First, the fall. Our first reading was taken from the all too familiar account of the fall of our first parents, Adam and Eve. The fall of man came about when they chose to disobey God by eating from the tree in which he explicitly 
forbade them from eating the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because of the fall of our first parents, they and their descendants experienced the consequences of that action as a result. Just like perhaps when you were in school and you might not have done anything wrong, but the majority of the class did and you felt that punishment. It's the same kind of concept. Now, Jesus at the end of today's gospel states, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. What do the readings demonstrate? To reject the will of God has a negative consequence. But to do the will of God has a positive influence. We draw ourselves closer to the Lord. Now, many ask the question regarding of this gospel, what does it mean by everlasting sin or sin against the Holy Spirit? Isn't the Lord all merciful? So what is the unforgivable sin? The unforgivable sin is this. It's simply to reject God's mercy. It is to reject God. That's what it means to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. One cannot be forgiven if one does not seek forgiveness. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, there's one particular sin that we automatically, and it's been drilled in many of us since we've been kids, it's a mortal sin to miss Mass. Why is it a mortal sin to miss Mass on Sunday? Because it is to reject the gift of God. To reject God. To put other things before God. What do we say Sunday is? We call it Sunday? We call it the Lord's day, not our day, his day. That is why it's important for us, my dear brothers and sisters, to come before him one day out of the week, one hour out of our time, to say thank you and to worship the God who laid down his life for us, who gave us Jesus. To miss Mass on Sunday is to reject the gift of mercy, the gift of God. Some people think that just because they fall into the same sin, they cannot be forgiven. That is utter nonsense. Two things are necessary to be forgiven. A humble, contrite heart and a firm amendment not to sin again. There are many good people who fall into the same habitual sin, who approach the sacrament with a humble, contrite heart, and who do have a firm amendment not to sin again and make a good, valiant effort, but they keep falling. It is the devil who pushes people to blaspheme against the Spirit and doubt God's mercy so much they reject it. To reject the sacraments of mercy, all the sacraments in general, but to reject the sacraments of mercy, the sacraments of the anointing of the sick, the sacrament of reconciliation, and the most holy Eucharist, the very gift of the Lord's own body and blood given to us in his mercy, to nourish and strengthen would be a clear violation of the unforgivable sin because it is clearly rejecting the gift that God has given us. See, God, in respecting our free will, respecting 
our decision will not forgive us until we have a conversion of heart and mind. God, by his very nature, is loving and merciful, but will only act when we make the decision to return to him. So if we, like our first parents, reject his will and choose not to repent, there will be a consequence, my dear brothers and sisters. That's why we're encouraged. Frequent confession, frequent reception of Holy Communion, to remain close to the Lord. Now, as I mentioned that it's a mortal sin to miss Mass, there are some cases in which there's a good excuse that does not need to be confessed. You're sick, stay home. You're taking care of a sick child or relative and you can't find somebody, then you are excused. You work in a field that is absolutely necessary. You're a doctor, you're a nurse, you're a first responder. Those, when you have a weekend rotation. Now, what I often do with doctors and nurses when they tell me, you know, Father, occasionally I have to work on a weekend, I say, come see me once a year and just ask my permission. On those days, I excuse you from the obligation. See, as pastor, I got the power. But choose another day during the week and make that your Sunday. Transfer the obligation to another day during the week when you have those situations. See, when I make people come see me once a year to do that, it makes them, you know, gives them the responsibility of just asking. I mean, automatically in my mind, I presume it. But again, giving people the opportunity to come to the church and to request that permission. Now, if you choose something else other than church, you know, I'm going to choose to run a race or choose sports, and then you go to the end of the day, I'm too tired to go to church. Then you've chosen something else before God. But when you work in certain fields, like the ones that I mentioned, those are acts of mercy. We're called to care for our brothers and sisters. That's what God desires and wants. You're doing, you're living the gospel when you work in those fields. Then you're excused. So there's certain things that do excuse us from the obligation. Or like in a winter time, I often say this, if there's a threat to your safety or the safety of someone else, the obligation is not binding. And usually when you see me write that in writing, that's me dispensing in a way. Saying if it's a danger to you or yourself, you're excused. So we need to really think about, are we putting God first? Or are we rejecting God? That is why it is important to have faith. Something we're reminded of in today's second reading from St. Paul's second letter to the people of Corinth. We heard, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place you with his presence. This line reminds us that those who believe and trust in the Lord will be raised up. For us as Catholics, one way we express our faith is when we embrace the church and the sacraments. But the other important way we express our faith is when we encourage and invite others to draw closer to the Lord through the church and the sacraments. If we truly believe 
then we must share our faith, the reason for our hope. So what is the message of this weekend's reading summed up? Do not reject God and have faith. He expresses his love and mercy to us through the sacraments. Do not reject the gift, but in faith accept it. For those who do his will are his brother, sister, and mother. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Gather together in Christ, who conquers all evil, that has come confidently to the Father with our prayerful intentions. For our Holy Father, our bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may keep us true to our faith in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who believe, that they may have the courage to speak out boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from physical or emotional abuse, that efforts to heal and free them may succeed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our families in this community, that doing the will of God, they may be truly the brothers and sisters of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with illness impacting the body, mind, and spirit, may they find comfort and peace through the healing power of the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those visiting our parish family this weekend, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the departed, that they may come to that everlasting home, not made by human hands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of the holy sacrifice of the Mass being offered for Anthony Tony Smith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, as we offer our prayers, we thank you for your Son, the conqueror of sin and death who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for the offertory is number 564, Out of the Depths. If you mark down 
inside the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we present to you the offerings and the gifts and the sacrifices of your holy people. and cleanse me from my many sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and of all this holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glories of a Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, her blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, 
John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, all your saints. We ask that through the merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us in this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory of God, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep my soul safe for eternal life. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 
Christ. The body of 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 Christ. Our communion hymn is number 862, where charity and love prevail.
Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to just take this moment to express my gratitude and thanks to all those who participated and helped with in any way the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage this past week. It was absolutely amazing. And a lot of the planning was really, my dear brothers and sisters, trusting the Holy Spirit. Um, being a national event, you know, we really had no control over signups. Although if I was thinking about it, I would have had individual signups in parishes rather than just using the link because a lot of people don't use computers. And, you know, having us register people here in the parish. But I wasn't in charge of it. God was. But from all those who helped, you know, those who attended and served as liturgical ministers at the masses, I'd like to express my gratitude and thanks to those who helped have the, prepare the dinner the night before for the Pratcher pilgrims and the host families, and to those who helped with the breakfast on Tuesday morning, my deepest appreciation, because we were trying to multiply the, multiply the bananas and the fruit and everything, because on Friday we had 120 people signed up, on Monday we had 170 some, and then on Tuesday morning, this church was full with almost 300 people, which was amazing, but God provided. And the witness of the, the um, pilgrims going on the, the, the walk with our Eucharistic Lord was amazing. Um, it was really something, and we hope that people were inspired by it. I, I know, having read some of the comments, some people weren't happy about it, with having a large procession, but to each their own. But for those who witnessed that, 300 some people walking with Jesus, from here to Conewago, Conewago to St. Vincent's, and from St. Vincent's to St. Joseph's. Wow. It was amazing. So I thank you. And for all those who spent time with Jesus, especially those who spent time with Jesus overnight. I mean, there were several people in here over church overnight. I had to turn on my camera occasionally because everybody knows I don't sleep anyway. So I just turned it on, make sure somebody was over here with Jesus. And I was um, surprised and amazed and overjoyed to see people in the church overnight spending time with our Eucharistic Lord. So thank you, everybody. You did a wonderful job. And may we allow this experience that has enriched our, our diocese, our parish, our deanery, and ourselves. May we be inspired as we go forth to allow the Lord to work in and through us. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, the Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who pry about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn this morning is number 763, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. <laughs> 